In this video, I'm going to show you how we can use language models to automate the creation of all kinds of documents, reports, marketing plans, and memos, uh, so that we can create these types of things in just a few minutes using our company data without needing to manually look up information in all kinds of places and copying and pasting that information into a document somewhere. So this is a sample application I built for this purpose. And here our users can select from a number of different templates for a document they want to create, like these ones here. And you can see in these templates, we have all these curly brace values. And these are all placeholders for the actual content that we want in the final reports, uh, including both numerical values that we're going to fetch and calculate from our sales data. Uh, but the more interesting and the more novel part in all this is these text sections here in the report that we can now also automatically generate with language models uh, to describe the trends and the changes uh, in our sales data for this month. And so in this sample sales report, we have six pages describing our category, product sales, and ending with this conclusion and uh, recommendations. And so for context, our data here comes from Airtable in this example, where we have some pretty simple sales data. We have our product sales for various products and services, row by row. Uh, we also have campaigns describing various initiatives to improve our sales and uh, improve our margins. And then finally, some customer metrics, customer acquisition, churn, lifetime value, uh, satisfaction that we are going to use. And so then what that actually looks like is that after the user has selected the report they want to create, there are some additional selections like the departments. Here our fictional company has two departments and then the period, which of course in this case is a month for this monthly reporting. And then when we press this button here, this is when the actual magic happens. And I'll show you in a minute how this actually works under the hood uh, in the code. But the short version is that we are just pulling in all the data through the Airtable API. And then we are also making several calls to different language models uh, to generate all the text content uh, for the report. And after that is finished, we can now preview the completed document here. And the first page isn't particularly interesting. Here we can just see the period and the department that we've selected. But then starting from the second page, it gets a bit more interesting because here we can now see these numerical KPIs that have been calculated from our sales data for May. And then we also see this executive summary briefly describing the month and referencing these same figures uh, that we see here. And here, just for this specific UI, we are not generating just one version that makes it into the report, but we are actually generating several variations uh, of this executive summary that the user can then select and preview in the documents and pick the one that they think fits the best. And so in this way, we are adding a bit more control to the user so they aren't just stuck with a single language model generated thing, but rather they can actually go through a few different alternatives. And of course, we could just be using one model here and run that model several times to create these variations. But just to make it a bit more interesting, what I've actually done here is that I've chosen the three of the leading models, GPT-40 from OpenAI, Claude 3.5 Sonnet from Anthropic, and then of course the greatly publicized a Llama 3.1 open source model that was released just earlier this week. And so as you can see with the color coding here, we have one variation from each of these models. And then moving on to the next page, we have just some more details on the financial performance. Again, down here with some numerical data in this table for the selected month, previous month, and then the same month last year. And then some bullets here describing some highlights from that data. And again, with variations generated for these bullets. And then we have a few more pages for our product and category sales with the main difference that here we also have this chart where we can and we have dynamically inserted the data into this Excel chart within this uh, Word document, followed by this table of our sales by product. And then finally, on the last page, we just have these recommendations and conclusion. And here we can select uh, separately a variation for this intro as well as variations of these bullets, like so. And so then after the user has gone through the entire document in this way, their selections have been saved here across all these pages, like so. And then we can just export those selections, export the full documents, either as a Word document, in which case, of course, we can still continue to make some edits to the documents here. 
or alternatively, if we are happy with the documents as it is, then we can also just export directly as a PDF, like so. So that's our application in a nutshell. And now some highlights from the code side for how I actually built this application, which is that we have a front end, so the UI, all the UI elements built with TypeScript React. Uh, so this is where all the document rendering, downloading, selecting the variations, showing the progress bars, uh, all that uh, happens here in our front end. But then for all the actual data manipulation, data generation, that happens in our back end, which is a Python fast API uh, back end. And this is what I'm going to focus on here. And so what it looks like is that for each of our documents, our templates, we have defined this document schema. So one document has a list of pages. Each page has a list of tags. And these tags are our placeholders in the template that we want to actually substitute uh, with some real values. And so we have this sales report schema defined here with all the pages and all the tags. And then down here, we map all of those tags into retriever functions so that for every tag, we have a function that can be called to get the values for that tag. And of course, these uh, vary in complexity from very simple, just calculating a sum over our total sales revenue uh, or calculating our gross margin to then, of course, the language model functions, which gets a bit more complicated, where we are calling all our three different language models in parallel. And then, of course, associated with these language model functions, we have our prompts. So we have separate prompts for our executive summary here, for our bullet points, our recommendations, with instructions for the model on how to write each of these sections. And that's really a part of the beauty of this solution as well, is that we are generating each of these sections one by one, rather than just giving the language model this big task, like here's all the data, write me an executive summary, write me bullet points, write me recommendations, uh, which you could do in theory without running into the output limits uh, of these models. But as a general rule of thumb, the bigger the task you give these models at one time, the worse the results tend to be. It's going to give more generic, outputs, it's going to not follow instructions as well, it's going to hallucinate, make stuff up, uh, all these things that we don't like about working with language models. So the more you can break down these big tasks into smaller subtasks, the better you can give very specific instructions and examples about uh, what kind of style you want different sections to be in, uh, what kinds of trends and insights you want the language model to focus on, and then that way the results are just going to be a lot better. Now, of course, that does also mean that we are going to end up making a lot more of these language model calls, especially here because we are generating these three variations for each section. Um, so, for example, in the sales report, we are going to be making about 20 uh, LLM calls every time we generate a new report. But if we go back to our UI and here, let's generate another report. Let's go for the energy department and create the June report. You can see here that the way we handle this large number of uh, LLM calls, you can see here that we are actually processing all of these pages in parallel. So rather than making these 20 language model calls uh, one by one uh, sequentially, which would certainly take quite a while, we are running them simultaneously. And that's how we can still make 20, 30 or even more of these uh, LLM calls. And the process is still going to be quite fast, as you can see here. So now just looking through this document real fast that everything looks all right. We have the June energy reports with different products and categories, of course, and different recommendations. And just a few more things I'll show on the code side, which is firstly our main fast API file where we can see this parallelization in action. So this is where we are processing all of those pages uh, in parallel and then sending the progress uh, to the front end so that we can render those uh, progress bars uh, to the user. And then lastly, the only thing I'll show on the front end side is how we are actually rendering these generated values into our Word or PowerPoint documents. And here we are using this JavaScript library called docx templator, which allows us to do exactly that. So that just looks like this essentially we are reading the template file uh, with docx templator. And then once we receive the full data from our backend, 
we are just calling this render method on the docx templator instance and that's going to replace our placeholders uh, with the actual values. Now if you want to go deeper on this uh, there will be a link in the description to a github repo where I will share the full application code so you can check it out. Now I want to say a few more words about this use case from a more business value point of view and why I think it's a very valuable and definitely underexplored way to use these language models and the first point there is that this is a RAG application and that might not seem obvious but RAG standing for retrieval augmented generation where we are doing some data retrieval in conjunction with generative AI. Uh, here of course we are retrieving some data from our air table and then we are using that data to generate uh, the contents uh, for our report. But for most people RAG has become basically synonymous with chatbots uh, when in reality the chat really isn't the most efficient interface for a lot of things or even most things I would say uh, because typing is pretty slow uh, especially if you have to give a lot of instructions to the model and more importantly it assumes that the user always knows what are the questions they should be asking uh, when presented with this blank chatbot page and to give you an example we can imagine building a chatbot to help us create reports in that the chatbot is connected to our data and then the users can go to it to get any information they need uh, for their reports but what that actually ends up looking like is first of all a lot of typing and again it assumes that the user always knows what should a good sales report in your company contain not to mention that they still need to copy and paste all the values from the chatbot into the report and then when they go do their reporting again next month they'll just go through this same process all over again and this might even be an improvement for a lot of companies if they spend a lot of time uh, finding information and this can save some time. But that doesn't mean that there isn't a better way to approach this kind of a problem. And that's because what our reports and a chatbot have in common is that they both provide answers to questions. A chatbot provides answers one by one in a conversational dialogue. But you can really think of a report just as a collection of questions and answers in some predefined format. And if you have anything like a standardized process for your reporting, then you already know what those questions are that should be included in a report. And you know what a good answer should look like. And therefore, there's no reason why we can't just bake all of that, all of those instructions, all those rules uh, into the system itself, uh, rather than having every user reinvent their standards every time they use a chatbot. Now, I'll end on this last point, which is that the reason reports are valuable isn't just because they answer a bunch of questions, but more fundamentally, a good report is designed, should be designed to be a decision-making tool. So in other words, I don't really care about being able to chat with my sales data or my sales call recordings or my recruitment interviews. And what I care about is using these materials to get recommendations and action items that actually help me make decisions. And that's why where the value of a chatbot is derived in saving time for an employee who makes maybe 30, 40, 50 bucks an hour in finding information a bit faster, uh, the value of a report is derived from the value of a better decision. And the value of a better decision in business is often measured in the tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars. And so that's why I think this report generation is a really high leverage and definitely underexplored uh, use case for these language models. And now credit where credit is due. A lot of my thinking around this topic has been inspired by this great short article by Jason Liu, uh, who's definitely one of the leading voices in applied AI right now. So his blog should definitely be mandatory reading for any serious uh, AI engineer. Now, I've also personally spent the last 12 months consulting and building custom AI applications for several enterprise clients. So if you like the idea of building these kinds of AI tools for your company that drive actual business value, there will be a link in the description to book a free discovery call with myself uh, where we can talk about a potential project or some advisory work uh, for your company. So thank you for watching. Uh, I hope you found this video useful and I'll see you on the next one.